Classes for writers. Classes for writers. Classes for writers. Hello, and welcome again to Classes for Writers and our presentation of the Writer's Business Plan. My name is Patricia Green, and I'm your presenter for this series. My experience is as a small business owner during my 25 years in the writing business, first as a self-employed technical writer and then as a fiction author and teacher. Disclaimer. This class is presented as peer-to-peer -peer business material. It is not a substitute for professional services like those from an accountant, tax advisor, or lawyer. If you need help in those areas, please consult a licensed professional. This is the big day and the final lesson of the presentation. Please download the writer's one-year business plan document. This will be your template for creating your one-year plan. It's only one page, but comprehensive. That's what my former clients wanted to present to bankers. You might know of personal circumstances or goals that differ. Feel free to insert them. I'm giving it to you as a PDF file, which you can find right here in the lesson. If you have a PDF reader that allows you to make changes, like Nitro or Adobe Reader, both have free versions, you'll be able to manipulate the fields to suit your particular situation. In this presentation, I'll show you examples for nearly every item. You might also want to download the Writer's Business Plan Calculations Sheet from Lesson 3. You'll find all the formulas you need to create your business plan on one handy sheet. It's also part of the lesson you're working on. Let's go over the plan and discuss what goes in the boxes provided. The following are examples. There is a blank space for you to fill in your own details. Top panel. Those are your personal details. Mr. Schmo won't mean much to you. Left second panel, more personal details, but also a space to list your vendors. If you've decided to self-publish all or some of your works, you might want to put in a space for cover artists, formatters, and editors. Right second panel, here's the nitty-gritty requiring some arithmetic calculations. Using the formulas given in Lecture 3 and on your calculations handout, try to estimate your gross income for the year you're planning. Maybe you'd like to break that down into an hourly wage, or maybe not. Delete the line if you don't want to do that calculation. Do figure out the number of hours per week you'd like to work, and do figure out how many weeks you'd like to work. And be sure to deduct vacations, holidays, special events, etc. Next comes expenses. You'll have to do some research for these items, but we'll discuss each briefly. Maximum projected expenses. Add up all below that line and put it here. These items are tax deductible against your income in most cases. Keep your receipts, even if they're email. Please remember, I'm not an accountant. I speak only from experience in the U.S. and Canadian taxing systems. Advertising. Include all types of advertising, whether it's for a specific book or for your total brand, as in for name recognition. This means print ads, online ads, and blog tours. Publicity. This is not direct advertising. Publicity is often run by a vendor, but it might be something you decide to do for yourself. If you're using a vendor, this is where you note the cost. You'll also want to add in the cost of books given away as promotions. Editing. If you're working with a publisher, you might choose to skip this expense. If you're submitting your work to an agent or one of the big five publishers, you need to incur this expense. This is also true if you're self-publishing. Always have your self-published work edited by a reputable vendor. Covers and other art. Covers are obvious here, but you might forget to add in things like Facebook cover art, blog post art, that you buy from a service or vendor like 123RF, which is what I use. Add buttons or badges to use on your website, and also Twitter posts. Backup and storage. Do you back up your work to the cloud or a portable drive? If not, oh my god, what a risk. You might need to pay for a portable drive, see Capital Investments, but if you're not a cloud user, do this. 
Cloud storage includes Amazon Cloud, OneDrive, Google Drive, and Dropbox. Some of these services charge, but most do not so long as you stay within their limitations. The 5 gigabytes most provide will hold a huge number of text documents. Dues and fees. If you belong to RWA, add your dues in here. The same is true for the Authors Guild and specialized guilds and groups such as the Erotic Authors Guild and the Science Fiction and Fantasy Writers of America. This is also where you add in legal fees, copyright fees, ISBN charges, and contest entry fees. Capital Investments. This is where you budget for new computers, printers, portable drives, and other large expenses for hardware. Office Supplies. If you use red pens or highlighters, here's where you add them in. Don't forget printer toner or ink, as that can be pricey. You might also want to include the cost of paper goods like printer paper and envelopes used for business purposes. Staples and paper clips count too. The cost of dictionaries, thesauri, and research books belong in this category. Education. Do you plan to take classes pertaining to your writing? Like this one at Classes for Writers. Here's where you enter costs for the courses plus books or other school-related supplies. Try not to get the student supplies confused with office supplies. Research. This involves using different kinds of resources, including paid-for articles, library fees, not for overdue books, not a you, journals, and other research materials. Travel. If you plan to use a travel experience for the basis of a book, article, or photo spread, you should deduct those costs here. But remember, when you go to Pago Pago, you'll have a great time, but use it in your project actively. The tax man will bite you in the butt if you don't keep your notes on the location and use what you learn. Your projected net income is your gross income, which we calculated in part three, minus your expenses as determined while you fill out the business plan. Don't become discouraged by this net figure. The fact is, making money at writing, editing, and other artistic pursuits isn't usually the only reason a person is compelled to do it. Many people find it fun and enjoy the intellectual challenge. Other people do it for the praise and the potential fame. It's satisfying to do something so intense and accomplish a goal so many people can't manage. And finally, there's your self-respect. If you want to have a challenge because you have something to prove to yourself, learn the craft of writing and accomplishing your goals simply feels darn good. Lower pains. You'll write in the details in this section as you've been doing all along. Use what fits your genre and needs. I'll detail them here. You probably have most of this in your five-year plan, but it wouldn't hurt to check it every year when you fill out your one-year plan. Genres. That seems pretty clear. However, if you're writing to a niche market, be sure to include the subgenre. There might be more than one, so put your focus for the year in this box. Or if you're going to mix it up, list all of them. Summary of Business Strategy how do you plan to operate your business? Will you be advertising? If so, list potential advertising media here. How about social media for PR or blog hops, as in doing your promotions on a series of other people's blogs? List them in this spot. Do you plan to do any particular writing to entice readers to buy your books? For example, free short stories or blog posts? That's strategic. Include it. Maybe you're writing a series and intend to give the first book away or sell it at a deep discount. This is where you jot that note. Contest to enter. Make a list of the contests you'll be entering. You might also want to include the dates for the entry requirements and the cost for submission. Products and services. What are you going to accomplish this year in regard to your product? I break mine out into quarters. So, for example, in 2015, I had Striker 1Q 2015 in that box, Sonata's Moon 2Q 2015, and other stuff after, of course. Q stands for quarter of the calendar year. So, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Each is a quarter. You could break this down into months if you like. The choice is up to you. Target publishers. Self-publishing counts here, but you might want to additionally target traditional or small press publishers. 
Do your research to choose publishers which handle your genre and have favorable royalty and rights schemes. Editors for these publishers should be listed here. Take the time to research their names. You'll be glad you did. Target Markets Write out the demographics for your particular market. If you know your audience well, you'll be much more successful at reaching them. One of your target markets might be agents as well. List the ones you're going to pitch to. Distribution Channels If you work with a publisher, what distributors do they use? Do they have a storefront? Are they purely Amazon or Barnes & Noble distributors? If you know your distribution channels, you can focus your blurbs to suit them. And clearly, if you're self-publishing, you need to know where you're publishing to. Different distributors have different formatting requirements, and you'll need to alert your formatter so that she or he can make the right set for you. Competition. I know we all like to think of ourselves as a happy family, and in the most part we are, but readers only have so many dollars to spend on books, and consequently there is a competition for those funds. So, who are you competing against precisely? Who is selling books that are in your genre, at your level of experience, and with similar publishers, or self-published? If you know your competition, you'll be better able to reach your target market with more success. Other Key Tasks Make a list of the things you'd like to accomplish this year. Maybe you'd like to find an agent. Maybe you need to find a new publisher who will work with you in a different fashion or who has a better royalty scheme. Maybe you want to join a new guild and you need to save up the money for the dues. Or you'd like to find a better quality vendor in some area. These are things you'll want to spend your time on and they should be in your plan. Now you can write out your one-year business plan. If you're already part way through the calendar year, be sure to include what you've already accomplished since January 1st. That's our one page, one year business plan. I do one at the end of every year to be used in the following year. But be sure to think about each item carefully. Update it every so often as the year moves along. If you don't know something today, add the research to your task list and fill in the blank when you're able to. Much of this material will carry over into next year's business plan, and it also contributes to your five-year plan, or may be drawn from your five-year plan. But the more specific you are for each year's plan, the more you will be setting yourself up for success. Good luck with your business, and thank you for joining me here at Classes for Writers. Sign up for the Classes for Writers email list in order to be alerted when new classes come online. We've got a number in the works. The Writer's Business Plan Facebook page will continue for the next 18 months or longer. If you can't formulate your plan today or get stuck and have questions, you can always go there for help and encouragement. The following are copyright holders for photos, videos, and sound effects for this series. If you like what you've seen, I encourage you to use these vendors. Come back to this lesson to peruse this list. This concludes the Writer's Business Plan presentation series. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Classes for writers. Classes for writers. Classes for writers.